Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM is insisting that the power system will remain in surplus for the next five years, while talking tough on renewables and coal. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. ESCOM insists that a surplus is here to stay and therefore continues to oppose the connection of new renewables. Yes, that was a theme that emerged quite strongly from the State of the System update, which was given this week. Interim CEO Marcella Coco said load shedding is, is not in their vocabulary anymore and that Eskom, because of two factors, is now going to have surplus for the next five years till 2021 at least. The one factor is the recovery, the continual recovery in the uh, energy availability factor from its existing coal fleet. We know that that deteriorated very, very badly um, and it was uh, bel below the 70% level when Majuba uh, silo collapsed and therefore we had that period of load shedding uh, uh, in the country. Uh, since then there's been this um, mantra of recovery um, and getting the plant eventually to a target of what they say 80-10-10, so 80% availability, 10% um, planned maintenance and 10% unplanned uh, uh, outages. And uh, really we see that they have st that recovery according to their figures. They got uh, EAF of close to 78%, so it's approaching that 80% level. And they believe they're going to be able to m beat their target of uh, the 80-10-10, which was set for d after 2020. They believe it's going to come that stabilized uh, at that high level before that date. And the second factor is that there's been the introduction of additional capacity uh, one uh, unit at Madupi being uh, in commercial operation, another one having been synchronized to the grid, and then uh, we've seen the same unit, one at Kosile has now been introduced. It's not in commercial operation, but it it's, uh, uh, is being synchronized to the grid. And obviously we've got the, the new peaking capacity from Angula, and that's just what Eskom has added. We've also had the renewable program that's added some capacity over the last couple of years. Um, as, as well as the, um, the two private RPP open cycle gas turbines at o Avon and Diesel. So we've got to a point where we're really not burning a lot of diesel anymore, thank goodness for that. Um, and that uh, the coal fleet seems to be operation, operating much more stably and has recovered. And therefore Eskom is saying that we really don't need any more new capacity outside of what they're going to be introducing um, until 2021. Um, and they are therefore putting up, continuing to resist the signing of the latest rounds of, uh, uh, from uh, the Renewable in, uh, Procurement Program. And I think what we'll see is that either this process, this interministerial process, which uh, Public Enterprises Lynn Brown said is going to take place by mid-February, is going to come with some sort of resolution or some sort of uh, roadmap forward that's acceptable to everyone or it's not going to be acceptable and I think we're going to see that process or that conflict uh, uh, into the, the uh, a sort of a legal challenge or, and the courts and uh, that's I think where we're going to have to find resolution. So either through the interministerial process or through the courts we're going to get resolution to these 37 outstanding RPPs that uh, I suppose entered the process in good faith and feel hard done by that uh, Eskom who's not the policy maker and the policy maker hasn't ever uh, said that they are closing down the procurement program um, has, uh, and is the implement, uh, implementer supposedly of these projects is saying that they don't feel this new capacity is needed. Interim CEO Marcello Coco has strong views on coal and how to leverage it for transformation. That was another key theme I think of the state of the system. Um, we know that uh, a lot of what is in the state of capture report by the former public protector Tuli Maratella relates to a specific uh, coal, pro uh, coal arrangement that uh, emerged with a Gupta Link family to get uh, around Optimum. But I think the, that Eskom has been looking at this coal issue now for some time since Brian Malefi took over as CEO and looking at it uh, quite differently and uh, they seem to be in a much more assertive adversarial position with a lot of their coal suppliers. We've seen the, the very aggressive statements that they've made against Exaro's uh, plan to dilute their BE shareholding from over 50% to around 30% level, uh, describing it as a slap in the face. And uh, we now also see a much more assertiveness around the restructuring of Anglo-American coal assets in South Africa. We know Anglo has got uh, nine mines, three of them are totally tied to uh, supplying Eskom power stations. 
Iskram saying they own assets at those mines and that nothing uh, you know, about them without them in the sense that they feel that they need to give permission to the way Anglo moves ahead with, uh, the, um, uh, with the sale or exit of these coal assets. Um, and uh, there's also uh, just a general feeling, because there was a big conflict uh, with Glencore as well that led to the, the, the to get a, uh, buying of Optimum, that uh, Eskom is talking tough on coal, and their big uh, aim there and ambition there is to be uh, to use a, use their procurement as leverage for uh, more um, for a larger scale transformation or black economic empowerment and transformation of the coal industry. So they buy a lot of coal every year and they have an internal policy that uh, those new coal suppliers should be 51% black owned. Um, uh, so, so it's going to be, it seems, a situation of where people are not meeting that threshold, especially, well the new, new suppliers not meeting that threshold. I don't know what's going to happen in terms of the retrospective contracts, but new suppliers, it's going to be difficult for them to sign contracts. And I think also that with the restructuring of uh, Anglo and the exit of certain of, of these coal mines, Ang uh, Eskom wants to make sure that those mines that are dedicated to supplying it, uh, whatever arrangement emerges there, that it meets that policy. The issue is that that policy is not necessarily totally in line with legislation, where our legislation says 26% black ownership, but Eskom feels they have the right and supported by their minister very assertively uh, right and duty to help uh, use their pro coal procurement leverage uh, to the advantage of black economic empowerment and economic transformation. Koko also talks about making Eskom great again. What does that mean? I think that was, was the overarching theme actually of this update. So he was talking very much about a back to the future for Eskom. Now you must remember at the turn of this millennium Eskom was rated globally as the best utility in the world and that unraveled quite fast. Uh, eight years later we were, we were in, uh, seeing our first signs of load shedding and uh, you know um, Eskom, its deli delayed projects um, as well as you know the, the fact that it didn't match supply with demand and didn't well, weren't able to keep their energy availability factor up at their existing fleet uh, became a major uh, drag on growth and uh, confidence in this economy over the last few years. He says that with the recovery um, of the, the energy availability factor, with the admittedly late program now starting, uh, build program now starting to deliver. Eskom has going to, is going to rediscover its voice uh, and it's going to um, want to assert itself um, as it was the jewel in the crown of South Africa state-owned enterprises uh, in, this, uh, in the uh, seven, uh, 80s and 90s. It wants to go back to that. The issue that uh, I actually raised with uh, Mr. Koko was what does that mean in a, in a fast evolving and changing um, uh, energy environment? Can a vertically integrated dominant monopoly, is that uh, utility business, is that still the model, best model? He's saying that it, he's not in a position yet uh, to talk about that because it's an issue for the policymaker, but they have strong views as to where that should go. And I suppose that is, if you look at where they, they're putting a lot of their energy, and that is in building a big new nuclear fleet, I think they still believe in strongly that Eskom should be the dominant force in this, uh, in this uh, energy supply industry going into the future. How that's going to work with a policy that says that we need to have more competition in IPPs and this transition where it's not just the IPPs but right down to the household and business level where you can also become a generator uh, and potentially feed into the mix. It's going to be interesting to see how that vertically integrated model with this, this what people are saying, almost the uh, internet of energy because there's going to it's going to be much more diffuse how those uh, sort of two uh, two different philosophies uh, merge in this vision of making Eskom great again thank you that's the second take show for this week thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis